Hello, welcome back to Authors Off the Cuff. I'm Lauren Carr and my partner in crime here is C.S. McDonald. And today's episode, we are going to answer the question, do characters speak for the writer? And the answer to that is, well, is no. <laughs> sometimes, not necessarily, no. Not necessarily. Sometimes, sometimes yes, but not all the time. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, and sometimes readers will assume that just because a character has a certain uh, way of talking or belief or behaves in a certain way, they will assume that that reflects the writer's opinions and beliefs. Now, a good example of that is if I have a serial killer in my book, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a homicidal maniac. Right, Cindy? <laughs> Courts out. The, the, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some people actually think that Stephen King is a nutcase and not because of something he may put on Twitter or, or on social media, but because a lot of his characters are nutcases. Sure. You know, and sometimes, yeah, the jury's still out on that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But last year, like a, a perfect example of this that I had to deal with was a uh, blogger with Ivory Book Tours who she, she refused to, and went in reading a book, there was a book that was a historical fiction that was placed in the 1980s. And the protagonist, it came out in this book. There were other things going on in the book, but um, what this reviewer objected to was that this character proved to be homophobic. Or she said or did some things that was homophobic in the storyline. And the reviewer refused to even finish the book and just said, take me totally off the tour. I'm not even going to, I don't even want this touching my blog. And whenever I went to the publisher about, you know, that I had removed this blogger from this tour, the blog, the publisher said, but the character turns around in the end. And at the end of the book, she realizes her mistakes and she embraces this hom homosexual or whatever, this LGBTQ character. And she turns, she, she grows, Cindy. She, she grows and turns As around. Character. Right. The character. Which is the whole point of a story, making sure that the, that the character grows. I mean, we just spoke of that in our last, um, in our last topic. And our last talk. characters should grow from their brokenness. Characters who have problems with social uh, social topics should, or if they have problems with the social topic, should grow from grow from that. And that's where conflict the, comes from. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if if the character has grown, uh, you know. Yeah, and, you know, so, so if you have books that don't have characters who, so, and that's very often the way that an author in fiction has conflict. That's is you have characters that that's just part of being a fiction author is mm -hmm. having characters who will not reflect what who are different from you, right? Who exactly. are very different from you. Right. You know, and, and readers, and you would think most readers, especially avid readers, would understand that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, but you know, we've been seeing this in the last few years. For example, uh, you know, and and this will be a follow-on topic that we putting words in your characters' mouths. You know, is you know, like for example, books that have been pulled from uh, the libraries to, to kill a mockingbird because they have characters who are racist in that book but uh you know it's been known that the author of that book she's not racist she was not racist at all and right. with harper lee uh, the name came harper. to me harper lee harper, lee. harper yeah. lee wasn't racist but she had racist characters in the books and we have libraries who pull those books out because you know because of that yeah well you know you have to go with the time period and I mean, I run into that a lot with my Owl's Nest. You know that. My yeah. Owl's Nest series, um, they go back in time to 
try to fix a murder that happened, you know, to find out who committed the murder. And we come up against things like racism and things like that. And, and you know what? I have to deal with it. It's there in the 1950s. Oh, it's there in the 1960s. For crying out loud, it's there today. So, you know, it's it's something that I, I come face to face with in my Owl's Nest Mysteries. And I even have the character from present day say, hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. And the character from the past says, you're right. It's not right, but it's how it was. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've not had too many comments, you know, on those books saying, hey, you shouldn't be talking about that. Oh, yes, you should be talking. You know, because mm-hmm. we have to grow from it, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and that's where, and that's part of a well-written book. Is a book where you have characters grow, which we talked about in the last segment. Is that you know just because you have a character who is racist, and, and it's not just racism. That was the incident that uh, I ran into last year with a blogger who's who's no longer with iReads. You know, because if she saw if there was characters who said anything or did anything that she disapproved of, even though, but especially in fiction, these characters, they, you know, if if we wrote books, if fiction writers wrote books that did not have, that only had characters who were positive, who did not create conflict, who didn't, you know, maybe say things that were wrong or have beliefs that were wrong or were all good, then there wouldn't be any conflict. And we would be writing basically in a very narrow frame is where we would be writing because we couldn't have characters who are homophobic, characters who swear, characters who commit murder, you know, you know, because all these things are wrong, right? (laughs) (laughs) Not jumping, don't get anything wrong. And not wrote, functional. <laughs> right. And, and when I wrote the um, first four series, which was a military ops series, um, I had a friend, one of my very, very dear friends, and she was very, very upset with one of the characters, and she was upset with me because the character said, God damn it. And she said, Cindy, how could you write such an awful thing. You use the Lord's name in vain. No, no, I did not. My character used it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the same with the F word. I'm not someone who goes around spewing the F word uh, every afternoon or, you know, or if I stub my toe, I just don't. But I, you know, men who are in those military ops, they use that the F word. It's just a fact of life. They do. And so I would put it in those books. Does Fiona Quinn use the F word? Yeah, I think not. Yeah. Even, even my character from the Owl's Nest, she doesn't use those kinds of words. You know, the worst word you're going to hear in those books are dang. <laughs> and it's dang, D-A-N-G. D-A-N-G. <laughs> You know, that's that's all, you know, you're not going to see those, you know, big time swear words. But just because a character says it doesn't mean that's how the author feels or how the author speaks, Mm -hmm. you know. So that's that's what you have to remember, that a character is completely separate from the author most of the time. You know, I, I can't speak for 100% of the authors out there, you know. Yeah, they, and there are some who maybe, you know, want to re- keep that narrow thing, or they right. may actually believe that way, you know, right. you know, it, it all, it all depends on the author. Right. Each and author. then many times if you're reading something like a political thriller, those authors may very well be, I'm not saying for sure, but may very well be promoting their political views or agendas throughout that story. It's very, very possible that they are. But But in order to have conflict, they have to have characters who reflect the other side. You would hope so. Yeah. 
You would hope so. And they I mean, I don't, I don't read political th thrillers. I just don't. It's just not something I would pick up. But I would think that you would be absolutely correct. Yes. Um, I mean, I've seen them on on the, the the TV screen and the movie screen. So, yeah, you're correct. They have to have the other side there. But if they're pushing in an agenda, of course, the other side is 100 percent wrong. Right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that's that's just the way those things go. So perhaps an author who would write something like that, yes, would would be writing what they think, their opinions, the way they live their lives. That's possible. But when you get down to fiction, like uh, a romance or a cozy mystery or a regular mystery such as you write, not so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's all part of making a well-rounded book, you know, because mm -hmm. if you have a certain, if you write within just this certain narrow and, you know, and you don't replay, you know, I don't think that book that um, the blogger rejected last year, I don't think that book could have been written if it didn't have that character, you know, that who was the protagonist, you know, Re, you know, feeling and behaving that way. And it was obvious. And the publisher even said so. The the author didn't feel that way. And there was that complete turnaround. Right. At the end. At the end. It's of the just book. that the reader didn't give it the opportunity to do so. Didn't give it the time, you know, did not even want that on her page, you know. Right. And, and because of that narrow belief, she ended up, you know, there were two or three other books that, where she did the same thing. She would not even give the books the chance. Mm-hmm. Even right. though they had nothing to do with with the uh, with the author's beliefs or opinions, and readers have to ha have to understand that. And I think most uh, most readers who are avid readers who know something about literature, they would understand that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So so, what advice do you give, Cindy, for authors who are <laughs> who are you know whenever they write? How to keep from having these readers bail? Do you think it's even a possibility? Um, yes and no. Uh, I think that what all writers have to realize, as you and I have come to realize over the years, is that you cannot, it is impossible to please everyone. And every review that you receive is not going to be a five-star review. Yeah. Because not everybody is going to like your thoughts or what you read or perhaps perhaps your character such as as the blogger that lauren came in contact with you know just could not deal with that character and was not willing to give that character a chance to turn around so that's that's the thing write how you want you know yeah, yeah you gotta like we've said before in our other po podcast you gotta tiptoe through those tulips you gotta be careful what you say but at the same time, don't be afraid to write those characters because they're real. They are real because there's people out there that feel that way. Hey, mm -hmm. next time we're going to have a follow up to this topic. Um, next Wednesday at 2 p.m. will be our next um, program. And it will be, believe it or not, putting words in your <laughs> character's mouth. Do oh, the that's words match the character. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Hey, in the meantime, I hope you'll take time to like this, this podcast. And we certainly hope that you will subscribe to our podcast. And until next Wednesday, see you later.